Welcome back, everybody, to another edition of Na'in Shorts here in the secret den of the wandering Ronin. Crazy guy, but nice guy. He lets me use his place, his camera, and does all the editing for me, so that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> we're back here again at the martial arts power hour where we. No, <laughs> that'd be way too long. But it's just a little tidbit information of where we are and what we're doing in our martial arts journey. Now, every journey is going to be different and every art is going to be taught uh, depending on that particular instructor. Some stick really to the traditional way of teaching and some have really revolutionized the way they teach their art. Um, some things stay similar, some things change dramatically. Now, me personally, I feel that regardless of the tradition, every person is going to add their own little flavor to the mix on um, how they go about teaching things. They're going to have their own ideas that are going to influence and maybe even question, why do we do this versus that? Why do we still do this when it doesn't really become anything later on other than just being part of the art. And that could be because maybe they were never taught the significance behind certain teaching methodologies, certain ideas or concepts or techniques, and they just don't know. <clears throat> or perhaps they just find it no longer useful for what they're trying to accomplish. Ultimately, that becomes a huge guiding force to how you go about teaching is what it is that you're trying to get out of your students. Uh, if you're trying to pass on the lineage, you're trying to pass on the, the, the book the way that it was given to you, then yes, there are many things that need to be added and, and put there. If you're trying to do something where you're shading everything down, cutting out the fat and just focusing on the applicable ideas, which is what happened with the bladed mind that became IPC eventually, is that somebody questioned what they were given. It wasn't a complete system. It was just enough information for them to start kind of shaving away at things. And then it was passed on, and now it's being passed on to me in the sense of it's being taught to me. And what became the most important aspect of the teaching process wasn't so much what was being taught, but how it's being taught and we do our best to live up to that as as much as possible because ultimately it's the information is the information if we believe that the human body is two legs two arms there's only so much you can do with the human body it's a lot that the human body can do but there is also a finite limit to what is possible then what changes between the arts for me, uh, personally, what I've seen in the arts is just punching, kicking, throwing, locking, and I mean, that's as basic as it can get. And you see things like MMA, they use its most basic forms, and then those that can use it effectively are the ones that progress further in that sport. But when it comes to art itself, it's based on the human body. And again, the limitations that we have uh, everything that we can do. So what really changes then is that particular, say, creator of a system focused on one aspect of fighting and then expanded and created all these other ways to then explore that aspect. Uh, this other person wants to encompass uh, as many aspects as they possibly can about fighting. It's groundwork, stand-up, uh, weapons, um, and their system grows quite large and there's a lot to then take in but ultimately how well do the students take that information and for us that became the focus that became the goal and progressive teaching is one of the ways that we go about doing so really the main way that we go about teaching things it isn't about learning all the different angles and things like that rather we give them a very rudimentary um, understanding of the angles of the possible strikes that can then be created but once we have a baseline of say just the basic movements then we start progressing into ideas how would they best be able to use this angle one or for us a one o'clock what can it be used for 
So then we start little by little teaching the students, okay, you can do it here. This is one idea. This is another idea. This is another possibility. And we explore them through exercises. The exercises may change. The exercise may be even created on the spot. But ultimately, it's so the student can understand the concept of why they would use that particular motion in that particular moment. And once they get that, then they're able to use it at will. They're able to then incorporate it to what they're trying to do. So we're focused more on the result of the movement itself and not so much perfecting the movement or the technique. As a matter of fact, we don't really teach techniques in that sense and we leave it very open to interpretation because ultimately, like I said earlier, everyone adds their own flavor to it. Everyone has their own idea and own understanding. And if we don't consider that into how we give the information, then maybe that student won't get as far as you would want them to. Because ultimately, then it's what's the purpose of you teaching? Now, for me, it's to help somebody understand their mechanics well enough where they can use it for their self-protection, hence the name. Because you're never going to be told how you're going to be attacked. You don't know the skill level of the individual that's going to attack you. Now, this is the focus, right? This is the end result of where this goes for me and the way that we teach is how do we give them something that they can be, that they could use now, that they could use as soon as they walk out on the street, as soon as they're on their way back to wherever it is they're going after class. And for that, they have to understand what it's for. Not just how to use it, but why would they use it? And teaching them to question why and understand why then becomes the crux of how they're able to translate it. And keeping it simple is usually the, the easiest way to do so. Oh, excuse me. Because again, it's the result that we're after not the process so much, it's the result. So how they get that information, how they understand that becomes the crucial aspect of it. And again, take a simple motion, right? Just that, just what everyone calls an angle one, you know, angle two here. For us, it's an 11, because we use a clock system. And again, the names themselves are, are arbitrary as much as it is, oh, this. How do I mechanically make this more sound? So you explore those ideas and then you help the students understand why those things work. And the way that you do that is you put them up against somebody or you put them up against something that they can hit and you guide them, guide them through their own mechanics so they can get a better result. And what is the result of this? Oh, at the beginning, it's hitting with the tip of the stick, it's just hitting with the tip. And all of a sudden they're hitting harder. Okay, now they do the other one. You explore and explain and guide the mechanics, their own individual mechanic, and all of a sudden they can hit harder. Awesome! All of a sudden, in one class, they're hitting harder than they were at the beginning and they understand why. Now it's ingrained to them. And because it was kept simple and it's a movement that they could relatively do without little training, they no longer fight the information that comes afterwards. They accept that, oh yeah, this is simple. Yeah, I can do that. Wait, I can do that better? Tell me how. So their brains automatically start absorbing the information that's going to get them to progress. Because it's no longer about learning something new. Here, let me teach you this 13 step um, kata. Okay, I've never done a kata before, or I've never done those movements before, I've never done that kick before. So then it becomes a more difficult process for them to absorb all that, which is why we have basic training. In the basic training in most martial arts, you learn the movements first. You learn how to throw a kick, you learn how to throw a punch, you learn your transition between stances, you learn how to move from one plane to another, so on and so forth. So then later on you can put it together and you can perform the art itself. For us, we don't have that information. We don't have that system behind us. We only have the very basic movements. And because we only have the basic movements, we spend that time getting them to understand how to progress from that into something more effective. Because then you take the same movement all of a sudden, okay, now it's with an empty hand. 
okay, this has a weapon, now I'm doing the same movement with my empty hand. What can I do with that? It's a great question for students to have asking. All of a sudden, you're passing. You're stopping. You're passing on the backside. You're using it to get around their weapon so then you can use yours. So you can go back to your basic strikes, which you just strengthened the class before. Now you're adding the power of the mechanics here and using the mechanics here now to avoid to not get hit and now you can do whatever you want afterwards. Awesome, now they've progressed to that point. But the other person is also progressing. Okay, so what other ideas now can we add to this very simple motion, to these very simple ideas to then make it more effective against somebody who may know what they're doing, who knows how to move, who knows how to throw a punch. And then you start adding little by little these concepts on top of everything that you already learned. So they're not really learning something new. They're just learning how to use what they already have more effectively. And isn't that what we talk about in martial arts all the time between the difference of a beginning student and an advanced student? An advanced student is just one that can do the basics that much sharper, that much cleaner that much more effective and you can see it all the time in, in, in many arts where it's taught a certain way but then when it's being applied it doesn't look quite the same there are a lot of changes that happen where the person is now standing a bit more natural it's, it's in a fighting stand that's a little closer together is keeping things inside all of the same concepts that we see in other martial arts when it comes to the applicable side of things start showing up and that's a progression. How well we go about the progression, again, depends on what it is, the result that you're trying to accomplish. If it's to teach an art, then it does take a bit longer. There are more intricacies there. If you try to do something that needs to be applicable now, then a lot of that needs to be cut out and going directly to the point. Yeah. So, again, I'm currently experiencing more learning on the uh, traditional side with Kaju Kempo, but even then, GM Bob Gomez, shout out to you, I love your class, but even he himself has taken the time to cut things out that he doesn't feel are as useful combatively as other things and focusing more on the stuff that's going to work, the, the simplified things that are just direct to the point to what I'm trying to accomplish, which is survive a violent attack. And, and I love that we have similar mindsets in that. And it, one of the reasons why I've taken so much to Kaju Kempo, but more importantly to the way that he is teaching Kaju Kempo. Again, it's the how that became that difference between the two. And it just, it feels good to know that we're not the only ones that are doing it and we're seeing it more and more that people are just focusing on how to give the information more and progressive teaching seems to be um, more and more apparent in different arts and different instructors and I just thought that was something worth mentioning um, it's something that we've been doing for a bit uh, but to see other people outside of what we do it really does emphasize the idea that we've always said from the beginning is that it, it's not what you're teaching it's how you teach it that makes the biggest difference and we get to see those examples um, here and there from time to time and it, it is really um, makes us it validates what we're doing and it makes us feel like we really are on the right track providing a service to our students so how do you teach? How can you incorporate these ideas into your teachings? Are you already doing it? How do you go about teaching progressively to your students? And can we do it better? Because it's always about improvement. It's always about how can we then get to a point where not just some of our students are excelling, but all of our students are excelling. And I know that's a lot harder to do with a class of 20, 30 students, but it may not be impossible. I wouldn't know how to go about doing so right now, but maybe you have some ideas that would actually benefit somebody who is trying to raise the level of all their students and not just the small group, because I do have a small class, so it's a lot easier to individualize the lessons.
depending on what each person needs. But just a thought, some more ideas. Thank you very much for joining me on another one of Naeem Shorts. Until the next one. Three, two, one, cut!